Now we will have a glance of the life of Saint Claudine through one skit. So let's see. March 31st, 1774, from the Church of St. Matthew, the bells heed forth their joyous music, a greeting of welcome to me. Welcome to a new member born, the day before and baptized, Claudia, soon to be shortened to glad. What were the mysterious designs of the Father upon this marvel, the soul of a child, in their joy and gratitude, lovingly accepted in faith the unstructural design of God? Claudia was Second in a family of seven, three boys and four girls. And each one was considered as a gift of God. Gladly lived a carefree, normal childhood. Claudine thought of the many souls who had never heard of God, nor experienced as she did. His loving kindness, the practice of charity, especially to him. In 1789, the revolution broke off and the Tamiya family had to face many trials and privations, as was the case in many other families. Her brothers were also arrested. Disguised as a servant, Claudine asked to see the prisoners and the guard, trying to find out what kind of a person she was, said to her roughly, as he filled a glass, Come, bring with us to the Republic. With these words, he drank half the glass and with his filthy hands, he gave the rest to the gladiator. Claudine could feel her cheeks burning. She emptied the glass at one gulp. That was the price she had to pay to visit the prison. For soon her brothers were to be condemned to death. In the 
morning of 5th January 1794, she met a sad procession and suddenly her heart stood still. She recognized Louis and Francois changed together. Their looks met. She stood for a moment filled with horror and anguish. Overcoming her grief and filled with a new courage, she managed to come closer to her brothers. Louis made a sign to the servant who accompanied Claudia and said in a low voice, bend down as to pick up something and take letter from my shoe for our mother. The servant who was distressed at seeing the boys trying to speak something but was cut short by Louis. He understood, bent down, took the letter and gave it to Claudia. While Louis whispered, Gladia, forgive as we forgive.
but they, there was less bread in the house and that was not enough for her sisters and all the children. Then the sister in charge came to St. Claudia and informed her that there is not enough of bread for us and for children. So St. Claudia said, we will go to the chapel and we will pray and God will provide. While they were in the chapel, The doorbell rang and one sister went and opened the door. And saw that one man was standing with a sack of wheat flour. Then sister came to St. Claudia and informed that a man had come with wheat flour. So St. Claudine came to the door. And said to the man, We did not order this, that may be somebody else. The man said that, The address is this, and the money is paid. He kept the floor and gone. They went to the chapel and thanked God. One evening, January 29, the mother foundress suffered a stroke and remained paralyzed. For five more days, thin, weak, struggled, and unconscious, now in coma. On February 1st, during one of her lucid moments, the nuns who were with her heard her pronounce distinctly and with expression of intense joy how good God is. How good God is. Those words of praise uttered with loving conviction summarize her whole life. She must have repeated them often since they came, spoke so spontaneously to her lips as she lay on her deathbed. Those who witnessed the scene were never to forget it. So these were the some glimpses of Claudine's life.